Mark here from Ripple Training. So in the past two episodes, I showed you different techniques for performing a sky replacement, either using the object tracker or removing all the camera movement from the shot, creating the composition, and then adding the camera movement back in. Check the links below if you haven't seen those. Today, I wanna to show you a technique when tracking the sky is not an option and removing the camera movement is also not an option. Let's dive in. So in the last two episodes, we did sky replacements, both by tracking the sky to a shot where we found something that was trackable with the object tracker, and also by stabilizing the shot in tripod mode so that there was no movement and then adding the camera movement back once we created the composite. This time we're gonna look at a situation where neither of those are an option. So with this shot here, we once again have a vertical video shot with camera movement, not a ton of camera movement, but the problem here is number one, if we select it, go to the video inspector and turn on our stabilization, it'll happen immediately because I've already done it. Tripod mode is not selectable because there's just a little too much camera movement in here. So I'm gonna leave that stabilization on because it will make the next process a little bit easier, but we cannot remove all the camera movement from the shot. Secondly, before we're able to track something in the shot that matched the movement of the sky, and we had some clouds that help us see what was going on. But here, that's gonna be difficult because there's really nothing to grab a hold of. And even something like this little piece of land that sticks out, maybe it's a tree, gets blocked by our talent right there. So it's just gonna create an issue. So I wanna show you another option for doing this. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with Command minus. I'm gonna option drag a copy over just so I have the original, which you'll see why in just a minute. On this copy, I'm gonna set the scale to minus 100%, which seems crazy, but it will make sense in a minute. Then I'm gonna option drag yet another copy over that we'll come back to. Now, I am gonna track this shot, but I'm not trying to track the sky. I'm trying to track something that shouldn't be moving so that we've removed all movement from the shot. And things that shouldn't be moving would be like all of the ground, anything on the ground, and even his foot shouldn't be moving. If we move around, he doesn't move that foot. So anything that is stable with respect to the ground are good targets, but we also need to find something that has good contrast that's gonna be picked up by the tracker and that remains in the shot the whole time. So we have some bowls of fruit down here that might work. I'm actually just gonna try to track his foot here. So once again, I'm gonna go to the video inspector to the bottom, click the plus for trackers, add a tracker, scale it down, move it over his foot, zoom in tight, reposition here, and make this nice and small and place it where there's some good contrast, maybe right about there, and see how that does. And if I scrub through that, it looks like it's locked on nice and solid. Great, so I'm going to press Shift Z to fit that back to the window. And now that it's tracked, let's name the track, Track Toes. And now I'm gonna take the copy that is also inverted and drop it on top. Snapping's enabled, so it snaps perfectly. And I'm gonna to go to the transform tool. For the tracker, I'm gonna select track toes. That will flip over our shot back to the way it's supposed to look. You need to make sure scale is not selected here, just position and rotation. And now, if we look at his foot, in fact, let me look at the original shot. I'm gonna play it and place my cursor over his foot. So you can see my cursor's not moving, but his foot is moving in relationship to the cursor. But now when I go to this shot, place my cursor over his foot, you can see how it stays very still. It's not perfect. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's much better. And in fact, if I turn off rotation, need to deselect and select the transform tool again. And let's start turning off rotation. And I'm also gonna reposition this shot a little bit more in the center. Place my cursor over his toe. 
and now we can see it's really stable. So with rotation turned off, it's much better because the camera really isn't rotating, it's just kind of moving left and right. But you can see how stable that is right now. So there really is no movement in the shot anymore. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the shot and just frame it so it has a decent starting framing and also take that rotation out just so we're starting exactly full frame. We'll be able to fix this issue of seeing the rest of the shot in a little bit. I'll turn off the transform tool. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna use the magnetic mask to isolate the people in the shot. Before we do that, I wanna let you know that we've just released a brand new tutorial called Creating Effects with Masks in Fonica Pro 11. In it, I show you how to use the magnetic mask in combination with other masks for color grading, special effects, text reveals, cloning effects, and much more. And it includes our RT Mask Effects plugin, a collection of 12 must-have effects built specifically for masked objects. It's on sale for a limited time. Check it out at the link below. I'll select it from the Enhancements menu, select both our subjects, and I'm actually okay with selecting some of this ground here, and you'll see why uh, as we get kind of to the end of this. I don't really want this part there, but selecting areas around their feet will actually help us out. So with that, I'll click Analyze. Click Done. And now we see the clip below, but we can just disable that with a V key. We can't get rid of it. It needs to stay there because this clip of our couple needs it for the tracking information. But notice how they are nice and locked in place right now. So now I wanna create a new background for them, really just a new sky. But what we're gonna do is start with this clip here. This is the original. I'm gonna export a still frame. Save current frame. A JPEG's fine. I'll call it dancing couple for sky. And then I'm gonna open that still frame with Photoshop. There are multiple ways you could do this, but since I do use Photoshop, I think it's a useful approach. So what we're gonna do here first is use the object selection tool to select both her and him, holding down the shift key. I'm gonna modify that selection by expanding it by about five pixels. And now I'm gonna use Content Aware Fill to remove them. And can, we can see the result over there. That looks good to me. I'm gonna hit OK. Command D to deselect them. And now we've removed the couple from the shot. And from here, I now wanna create a nice sky background. So what I'll do is I'll merge these together with Command E. Then with my rectangle marquee tool, I'll select the sky down to part of the greenery here. And I'm gonna use generative fill. I'm gonna say a beautiful sunset with a low horizon and click Generate. That looks pretty good. We've got a couple of different options here. Think that's okay. The horizon might be a little high for where we're going, but let's try it out. So with this one, I'm gonna choose File, Export, Quick Export as a Ping, New Sky Background, go back to Final Cut, and let's bring in this new sky background at the bottom of our composition here. So a couple little problems here to fix. We've got a little bit too much selected here with our magnetic mask. So let's see if we can reduce that a little bit. And I'm actually just gonna paint in a little bit more around our feet. Basically where their feet are is gonna matter the most. And then I'm gonna paint out areas that are far away from their feet, something like that. And we'll see how it does with that. And let's analyze that again. Done. And now that looks pretty good, but we obviously have some issues up high here. So let's focus on that. I'm gonna zoom in close. So one issue is that we see a little bit of white line around them here. And then much bigger deal is this area here and some of this area of the hair. And this is gonna be 
rather difficult to solve. We can get pretty close, but this is low resolution, bad codec to work with, but it'll show you sort of the limits of what you can do. One thing we can do to get rid of this line around them is try the feathering on the mask, on magnetic mask, but if we pull in the feathering, it very quickly is going to start kind of fading the edges. So that sometimes it's not going to work for you. I'm going to reset that parameter. And instead, I'm going to go over to my effects browser to our RT mask effects, which are included free in our masking tutorial. And I'm going to add the mask shrinker because instead of feathering, the mask shrinker actually just pulls back the mask. So if I, if I increase the shrink a bit, we can see we get a better line around their hands. So that's step one. Now, the problem here is that the original background was much lighter uh, because she was against a very bright white sky and we have a much darker sky here. And the magnetic mask really just isn't able to separate this fine hair detail from the background. So one way to accomplish this is to use our darkened blend mode trick that we used in a previous episode. And I'm just going to focus on one part of this to show you the basic approach. So basically from about here, I'm going to set a marker and just kind of identify the bad part right to about here. I'm going to set another marker and I'm going to take a copy of our sky and option drag it above and just trim it down to this area. Now we can no longer see our couple, but let's change the blend mode of this background to darken. And now we only see the darker pixels. And this kind of solves the problem. We can see right here it's better, but obviously the sky is darker than her skin. And so both their skin, so we get this kind of overlapping situation here. So one option is to try to darken them a little bit. And the other is to add some masking. And I just want to show you how both of those can contribute. So if we select them and, and let's go to the color inspector, I'm just going to add a color board. And if I just bring down the exposure, you notice how they start to come back into the shot. However, it's much too dark for what we want to do here. I'll just bring down the shadows and the midtones a little bit. And that starts to help. But the other thing we can do is mask this darkened area. So I'm going to go to Mask and Keying in the Effects Browser. I'm going to add a Draw Mask. I'll go back to the Video Inspector in order to get the tool available. And I'm just going to draw the mask around the area that I'm most interested in, which is right here. And I'll adjust it. If we toggle this clip off and on with the V key, you can see that we've now used darken just in this particular area and nothing else really matters. Technically, we could turn off that color grade we did on the lower clip and keep them brighter and we still get a good result here. So obviously this changes over time. So what we want to do for the draw mask is add a keyframe for the control points. And I'm going to move forward one frame and adjust those control points. This is only a few frames where this kind of problem happens, but I don't want this mask to overlap him or her because they are lighter than this background. And that's why this is really tricky. And I'm just moving a frame at a time in order to Cover that up. I'm going to add one more control point by double clicking. And we're pretty much out of it by then. I'm going to go back in the other direction and get it off of him. Bring it up a little higher. And we need to cover this part in here. And this doesn't matter right here because her hair is darker. So it doesn't really matter where the mask is on this part. It's more up here. And then we're out. So if I turn off the visibility of the mask by clicking this icon here, we can see how that's addressed the hair right there. I'll toggle that off and on with the V key. And you basically then do the same thing for this area up here or any other areas that you uh, want to address. So you can see here I've added several copies of the sky background where each time I've used a separate mask, you really can't use the draw mask multiple times on the same clip. So if I select this one and toggle the visibility, you can see I've 
tried to address where the old background showed through in their hands here. You get a little bit of discoloration because of this sky color. So I've also reduced the opacity of this clip a little bit. If you go all the way down, you get that white back. If you go all the way back up, it's quite discolored. So I tried to find a middle range where it was seemed okay. Then this clip here, you can see I've addressed her hair where that background was much brighter. And this is the reason I wanted a lower horizon because a lower horizon would have allowed this to blend in better. But that does a better job there. And then this top one is where his hair looks kind of white here in the background. So if I toggle this back on, again, we're getting a little bit of discoloration, but it blends in better. So if we zoom back out to the full clip and look it over, we get a much better overall composite. So let's look at the entire before and after. And I like it better without adding the camera shake back in. As always, we'd love to see your feedback. So leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time. Okay.